So folks, it just seems like this whole race, and you know it's coming, it's just going to get crazier and crazier. And I've just got to play a clip of Donald Trump. I've got several clips, and I can't help that they make him look stupid. I really can't. I mean, that's that's the way it is. But before we get there, I've got to play you this. So don't you love hearing about all these Republicans that are taking credit for the infrastructure bill? Well, here's Grant Stern on Twitter, and this came out this morning. He says, I just asked Representative Maria Elvira Salazar, Republican from Florida, if she's ever refused to accept funds that she voted against. And they give you such a word salad. You know, it, it happens all over the place. I mean, they're, they're all doing this. They're trying to take credit for the good money that's coming in for their constituents that they voted against. So here she is. You've accepted infrastructure funds, but you voted against Listen, that. That's bill a as perfect well. example. The infrastructure, Why perfect vote example. It? You know that within the infrastructure only, less than twenty percent was for infrastructure. What's infrastructure? Roads, dams, bridges, and broadband. What? Only twenty percent of the money was going for that. The rest, you know, where it was going to? To bureaucracy. <laughs> God, no facts. You know, they're living in a fact-proof world. You know, they don't even touch the facts, get near them. They, they run from the facts, claiming that 80% of the money from the infrastructure bill went to something else, you know, just out of the blue, just because it makes sense to say that, right? No proof. Have, I don't want to be have funding. Have you denied any funds that you voted against? A what? Have what? you denied receiving, have you refused to accept That's any of the, the funds you vote That's against? That's not the way it works. Thanks. Oh, okay, yeah. let's Thank do it. You. Now, there she goes, taking credit all the way, folks. Taking oh, yes. credit. And then I didn't know about this. I just thought I'd throw this out there. It is sad. The Independent is saying that the there's a Kentucky state senator dies after driving his lawnmower into an empty swimming pool. I kid you not. Now, when I read that that title there, you know, I was like, oh my God, how, how, how in the hell was he like somewhere else mowing a yard? Was he like mowing someone's yard that he wasn't familiar with the layout no no he was actually mowing the yard at his house last month i mean and this is sad he plunged into an empty swimming pool while aboard a lawnmower he was 76 and he struggled for a long time but i mean how how do you huh? um folks when you look at the guardian this morning they had this information talking about broadcaster hugh hewitt and he's sort of like on the radio and all this kind of stuff, podcaster. And the former president attacked special counsel Jack Smith as a scoundrel. And the president said he does not think he would be impeached for firing Jack Smith if he got elected. He famously said this morning that within two seconds of being elected, he would fire Jack Smith. And Donald Trump says, no, I don't think they'll impeach me if I fire Jack Smith. Jack Smith is a scoundrel. He's very... A very dishonest man, in my opinion, a very dishonest man, and he's a mean man, a mean man. But his problem is, he's so mean, he always goes too far, like the raid of Mar-a-Lago. Oh, okay, so, yeah, the raid has got Donald Trump a little bit hot under the collar, right? And, and all of that top secret information all over the place at Mar-a-Lago, the bathroom, the dance floor, you know, where wasn't the information, the top secret stuff. Rumor has it that he even slept with some top secret information. But the whole analysis of, in Donald Trump's head that, no, I don't think they will impeach me if I fire Jack Smith. I can guarantee you that they will impeach you if we have a Democratic Congress in this next term and you do that. God forbid you get elected president, but if you do, yes. I mean, what kind of a calculation is that? I mean, it doesn't even make sense, folks. It really doesn't. What a question. So here's one that I got to play for you, folks. Donald Trump salutes while playing an alternative national anthem at his rally featuring violent January 6th insurrectionists. Please rise for the unfairly treated January 6th hostages. And listen to this, folks. I mean, this is like a cult type thing here. You can't tell me this is not ladies and gentlemen please rise for the horribly and unfairly treated january 6th hostages hostages oh, 
okay, whoa, whoa, whoa. You know, I realize that with Donald Trump, up is down and down is up and white is black. And yep, it's all been muddied. But the reality is these people violently tried to, well, in fact, they did take the Capitol. I mean, you know, the, the, uh, the insanity of this folks. I mean, it, uh, it, it, it makes you mad on one level, but then it makes you sorry for the people that think that they were unfairly treated on the other level. It really does. But have a listen to this. So while I was looking for information, I was actually looking for the clip from Hugh Hewitt uh, that I talked about just a second ago, but I found this. Remember Senator Ben Sass, Republican? Well, back on January 8th of 2021, he said this, and we're talking about the, the riot at the Capitol. He was on Hugh Hewitt's show. So he said, Senator Ben Sass said, I think Donald Trump wanted there to be massive divisions, and he was telling people there was a path by which he was going to stay in office after January 20th. That was never true. And he wanted chaos on television. I don't have any idea was in his heart about what he wanted to happen once they were in the Capitol, but he wanted there to be chaos. And I'm sure you've also had conversations with other senior House officials, as I have. Hugh Hewitt says, I have. Ben Sass then says, as this was unfolding on television, Donald Trump was walking around the White House confused about why other people on his team weren't as excited as he, as he was as you had rioters pushing against Capitol Police trying to get in the building. Hugh Hewitt quickly changes the subject. That said, Hugh Hewitt says, and Ben Sass says, that was, that was happening. He was delighted. Trump was delighted and couldn't figure out why everyone else around him on his team wasn't delighted as they were pressing violently on the Capitol. Um, I mean, it's just, you, you don't, you don't, if you're for democracy, folks, none of this makes sense, right? What he's done. Standing, honoring people, right? Calling them hostages, the same people that that took over the Capitol. If you're for democracy, there's nothing in any of that that makes any sense. So folks, I got to tell you this. So is Donald Trump doing the math right on this? Donald Trump, highlight this morning here, uh, this article that's coming from, I believe this is the Washington Post. No, this is the New York Times. It says Trump flirts with the ultimate tax cut, no income taxes at all. The former president has repeatedly praised a period in American history when there was no income tax and the country relied on tariffs to fund the government. So essentially here, what he's saying, Ron Filipkowski kind of laid this out, is that Donald Trump is saying that China will fund the U.S. government. But folks, the problem with that thinking is that it doesn't go far enough as it's too simplistic, right? And beyond the fact that it's going to raise inflation when you start putting tariffs on everything, we know that. But the problem with it is that China holds about $860 billion in U.S. debt, and we pay at 3% about $27 billion on that, up substantially as the interest rate goes up, which that's a low ball, 3%. So how is that going to work? Have, have you totally forgotten, Donald Trump, that we're paying interest to China to the tune of about $27 billion? So how is it all going to work? What, do we get to swap checks? I mean, it's half-baked, folks. He doesn't, he doesn't think through anything. And I guarantee you, if he came out and said that he's not going to pay interest to China, well, that would be a problem in so many different ways, most notably with the stock market that would tank. Folks, this man is is on a roll, and it's just going to get worse with every day that we get closer and closer to November 5th.